Hey there, Barrett Biggers here. I'm the artist. And here is my process in Photoshop for the Bumblebee, one of my newest art that I created. And this one was kind of similar to my honeybee art. I wanted it to look very similar to it because they kind of match as a pair. And I also have a monarch butterfly that I did that's kind of similar as well. That's kind of like a pollinator series. I'm trying to draw attention more to um, insects and pollinators specifically because they're so important in nature and I don't think they get enough love. So my artistic take on this was to do kind of a almost a floral sculpture using branches, wood, and other uh, vegetation as kind of a skeleton. Almost as if if you've ever been to Epcot or uh, at Disney in Orlando and they have a uh, floral, it's called a... Um, Every spring they do like a flower festival and they have these sculptures made out of uh, pretty much plants, plant material, and they use all sorts of um, wood and wire and things to build a structure like a skeleton. So kind of where I got the idea from of doing my artwork like this was kind of partially inspired by that. But I also enjoy topiary, I love gardening, I love nature, and I, I like to incorporate all that. I actually have a degree in biology so I bring in a lot of that kind of nature love into my art. So specifically in Photoshop here, I'm gathering assets of pictures that I have downloaded from Shutterstock, purchased, and also from Unsplash and Pexels.com. They are just photographs of branches, dead trees, things like that. And I basically isolate them because they're usually on some sort of blank background, which makes it a little bit easier for me. And I use um, something called color color range because it's usually a white in the background or, some, or blue, light blue, like a sky. And I just use color range and then I set it to a maximum so it only picks up the dark areas. There's other ways to do it now. Photoshop has a new built-in um, select subject kind of tool. And that's actually working really well for these very obvious selections. So if you're in a pinch and you don't want to take the time to do all that, you can always use that. And it's almost always accurate, as long as there isn't too much um, uh, colors around the edges, which causes halos and things like that. So you have to manually clip those out sometimes. But uh, yeah, none of this, I'm not using any of Photoshop's new AI features, and I'm not using any AI art, generated art on this yet. I, I play with AI art a little bit on the side just for fun, but I haven't used it in my artwork. I'm not a big fan of how it kind of steals and uses other artists' styles without their permission and consent. I, I'm not a fan of that so much. And if I ever did use AI, I would only use it to do like what you're seeing here, like little photographs of a stick or like a flower or something I just can't find online. And that way I don't feel like I'm really ripping off anybody or any artist. I'm just literally just taking a photograph from a stock photo and I, I, you know photoshop and adobe stock is now doing something that's a little bit better where they're they're having their ai built into photoshop and they actually let you generate images that are based on stock photos from adobe stock and i feel better about that because at least those artists are getting compensated so they say you know i don't know 100 percent but i hope so i hope that's the case so if i'm going to use it i'll probably use that and um, anyway, that's for now, I'm not using it because I just don't see the need. It doesn't really do anything. I might use it to create composition ideas and like if I want to build something and I'm not sure what I want to look at yet, I'll do that as just a base, but I don't think I'm going to use it directly in my art anytime soon. So, but that might change if they become more ethical. I don't know. Anyway, so you see that I selected a lot of different images here, photographs. Some of these are kind of pulled from other artworks I've done, which I knew that the, um, the flowers or the, the leaves or the plants looked really good. So I pulled those out already and I kind of placed them all, I threw them all up on the canvas like this on the sides. And it's kind of an old school way to do this. I know a lot of people do it differently, but kind of the way I do it, I like to put all my pieces of my puzzle everywhere. It's almost like when I was a kid, I played with Legos and I dump all the Legos on the floor. I threw away the instruction manual and I just kind of like built whatever I wanted to buy, build. And, um, you know, I got, I got some result that was more creative and more interesting to me. So I kind of do that process subconsciously here. I, I throw up all the pieces and when I'm building it, what I'm looking for is I'm trying to obviously match the image to the right. That's my reference image. And then I pulled out my other original artwork on the left there. You can see the honeybee 
just as a reference so I know I'm not getting too far away from it. And what I do is I build it up from the base, the background forward, and I kind of work on getting the coloring and the lighting correctly. And I'll individually, you can't really see it here, but I'll individually paint light onto different bushes and different flowers individually. So I'll use my brush and I'll lock the layer. And when I lock the layer, that lets me paint directly on the layer and nothing else. And I'll set my blending mode on the, on the brush to be um, overlay or soft light. And I'll just paint white or dark. And then I'll paint like a lighter yellow or green depending on the reflections. In this case, it's more like the whatever the color of the flower or the plant is, is good enough. And I'll just like highlight or kind of burn areas to make them look like they're more in three dimensional space and you know accurately match the lighting to the B reference photo. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of like play with watercolor texturing and ink texturing. This is this age. So I do the base photographs, I get it all done, and then I play here in the texturing. And what I'm doing here is I'm adding ink stains, watercolor stains, again, things that I've either painted myself or downloaded and um, purchased. And then I'll put those on here many times, like there's hundreds of layers sometimes. And I'll just see how it looks. Sometimes it could be overkill, but my goal is to make it look more hand painted rather than just a digital collage because I think that's kind of unique to my style. It gives it a little more interest. And yeah, you can see that I'm just kind of putting all these things together little by little. I do this process for most of my art. And then at the end, I do color correction. I do lighting correction. I'll do like a, a camera raw filter. And then you get this final result. I added a few little bees to the side and things like that to give them some friends. But yeah, this is the final result of my bumblebee. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, you can go get prints and get canvases at bearbiggers.com. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Give me a follow.